just because you finally, and I'm using finally very loosely here, finally get that text back after fucking months dealing with a fuck boy, that does not mean you let him back in. That question him. If you're going to even respond at all, question him. Because, like, that motherfucker knows exactly what he's doing. Okay? And I've had people in and out come back for different reasons. And depending on how we stop talking and how they come back approaching me, I may or may not let them back in. I'm not apologizing, apologizing for being a hairy and having to fucking shave my bullshit ass beard. Anyway, you know what's funny? The other day, I heard about this cult thing called 19 Theory, where you date the worst man at 19. And I don't know if, honestly, I'd call him like 100% the worst, but unfortunately, he definitely left a scar. Kind of shaped how I pursued relationships for a while because that was like my first relationship. Though I find it interesting whenever someone's like, oh yeah, 19 theory, but also like second love theory, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I think if we do a deeper dive analysis, the two contradict. That's not your second love. That's the second person you had hyper attachment to, but that's not your second love. I guess a video for another day, but if he's the worst person you ever have dated, hypothetically, that is not your second love. Could your second love screw you over in the end? Yes. But you cannot use worst person you ever dated and second love in the same sentence. That is someone you had unhealthy attachment with and was a used to, but that is not your second love. Anyway, main point being. Back to my side point for a minute. Okay, so... If you're like me, who has to shave their face every like four days, um, cocoa butter is such a fucking lifesaver. Okay. You just do that on any place that you shaved, and I rarely get ingrown hairs, and if they do, they're very like minimal, hardly turn into pimples or anything like that. Like this has solved all my problems. So highly recommend. In my post shower routine, I'll summarize it real quick. Shower, lightly get the water off. Don't like do a deep towel, but like use your washcloth. Please use washcloth. Your washcloth to like lightly pat off the water and then put lotion on. Then use your towel to dry yourself off. But it's more like an aggressive pat versus a light pat. So you're not like rubbing the lotion off. And then use like a body mist. Um, I was using Grace. Amazing Grace, um, but that one's kind of old, so I'm probably gonna throw that away. So now I've switched to Feu de Balm. I probably butchered that, but I love it so far. But I'm obsessed with woody, musky, ambery scents, so this is what I'm, I'm about to spray myself down. I'll probably do a full shower routine video later, anyway. But yeah. Now time to cut this shit out and also back to my story. Summarize. I've been talking about two different men if anyone I'm gonna I'm going to be primarily talking about two different men. But first guy when I was 19, it was a man I met or man is a strong word. It was a guy I met off of fucking Tumblr. 19 most of my friends live cities away because I really only have friends from cons. I went to a very weird Christian private school, and I was a very obviously an undiagnosed autistic nerd. It was not, it was not a, things were just weren't working. Anyway, um, yeah, met him through Tumblr. Um, God, what a fucking mistake. I met him a lot of great and sweet people from that. He was just awful. Over like Homestuck and like Jojo and some other shit. He was, he was awful. And I didn't know what the fuck I was doing. And he was from Norway. I know it's shocking. And the more I learned about him post breakup, the more I realized I got out of there pretty good because um, before me, he was dating this one girl who I, 
every once in a while we'll like check in on each other and he cheated on her i didn't find out until later obviously and then before her he was dating this guy from denmark who if i recall correctly he also cheated on like just <sighs> he had a fucking feeder fetish yeah, and, like, this motherfucker probably also cheated on me. Yeah. Like, he basically just ghosted me all of December and whatnot. Me being a little naive thing. Didn't understand why he'd do that. He even blocked me on Instagram when I was just trying to, like, figure out what the fuck was happening. I, of course, paragraphed it, whatever. He, like, like lied about why we broke up. He admitted to lying is the key point here and like he in his little like in january where he finally was like answering to his sins and this is after i thought he was about to kill himself mind you um he posted like a suicide note on one of his like facebook pages and like someone who is still very much my friend today who used to be like one of his best friends but realized he was a piece of shit and i bonded over him being kind of a piece of shit <laughs> and so i was like okay cool whatever he said and further down the line i of course get this little like basically a hey, hey text like seven months later like in july like fucking 7 a.m so if i rec remember correctly norway is about seven hours ahead yeah it's like seven hours ahead so i'm getting this text at like fucking 7 a.m ish whatever and he basically pretends we're getting back together pretends because two months later he announces he has an actual girlfriend and i'm like you were giving me pet names all kinds of shit saying you wanted to take care of me blah 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 and again, I was a stupid 19-year-old in their first relationship. And so my dumbass stayed friends with him and just over time just realized, oh, this man is deeply fucked up. Why are you using me as a little vent mirror and telling me about all your stupid shit you're doing and then asking me to buy you like a post or whatever? And I'm like, okay, whatever. Okay, whatever. And then I kept telling our friend group like, hey, He's kind of a piece of shit. Nobody believed me until like three or four years down the line. I even tried to warn somebody. And this is no shade to her. She was like 17. <laughs> I think she was like 17. She's from Europe, so she actually got to physically see him. Which means I I assume that he genuinely treated her worse than me. Because he couldn't do but so much from this distance. They physically hung out. And I know she was destroyed. She posted about it. She was like, like, very sad artist era for a little while. And I felt so bad for her. And like other people were like, yeah, honestly, he's kind of a piece of shit. And then I found out he plays League now. And I'm like, okay. Like I get updates from other people. I I haven't asked for an update since I was like 19, but yeah. He was a piece of shit, and then like one of my exes also ghosted me, basically for the moment. I'm like, I want a break. I was trying to like that one made less sense because like he like he just didn't communicate shit, and I unfortunately blew my savings on trying to spoil him and take care of him. This man couldn't plan anything if his life depended on it. I had to do all the planning for shit. Like, the most money he spent on me is when we went to Louisiana to go to a wrestling convention that he wanted to go to, that he was planning on going to, before him and I even got together. Like, and so, it, it was just like, I wasn't always the nicest person, and I'll admit that, but there's a lot of shit where I'm just like, bro, what the fuck? And when we broke up, he like tried to turn around a week like within two weeks to try to be like besties with me and i'm like what 
to the point where he was trying to complain to me about like these girls and this is a white guy um this guy was white and then he would be like oh yeah i'm so tired of dating white girls blah blah he was trying to complain and vent to me about two white girls he dated and, and i was like why is this my problem why are you talking to me about this cool whatever and try to make jokes like oh haha this is how i would like catch you and blah blah, blah. i'm like bro we're not we're not friends like that and like that final straw where i just straight up like i was just not going to talk to him anymore he was asking me to help him set up his tinder profile and i'm like we didn't break up on good terms why are you asking me guys we're not friends i don't know fucking figure it out you are 23 fucking figure it out i'm not your friend like that so i just i just i don't even think i was like i said i don't know and then i like stopped responding and i'm like yeah no that was obnoxious i'm not no i'm not your so twice have i been like basically played therapist as the emo i've been the emotional support ex basically um and then this other fuckboy I was involved with for like two years, almost two years, um, between 2022 and 2023, I, who, he was genuinely like actually just rotted from the core piece of shit, and I was in a bad place in life mentally. Like, you know when someone's like heart dried up? years ago and they hate their own friends the friends they've had since high school and they're in their 30s and they've just given up on everything and they just manipulate everyone around them and i was just like he was such a piece of shit honestly like everyone tried to warn me and i was stuck in my attachment issues and didn't know what the fuck i was doing in life and i had just moved to dallas and he was the one thing i clinged on to because i just moved to dallas and like, he would constantly fuck me over, or ghost me anytime I needed like help or anything like that. And it was just, he was awful. And then like, ghost me all of December and like, couldn't even like, when it was cold as fuck for New Year's, didn't even like, I asked, hey, could I come in for a second? Cause I'm literally freezing. Cause I just walked two blocks and cold. Like I was hurting, all my joints are hurting. I ended up catching the flu. If uh, you wanted to guess if whether he even so much as attempted, he read my messages. And then, of course, I did a paragraph about how much, and this is like the third time I had done a paragraph about how much he treated me like shit. And I'm, he's a terrible friend. And I'm like, this is the last one because I'm not even doing this. So he responds. I'm doing it for my own sense of catharsis. He liked the message. And. I was just like, I cannot let myself get in that position anymore. Don't let that motherfucker come back. And you know what? I was smart this time. Because that motherfucker did try to come back. Last month. First thing in the morning. It was almost 10 a.m. when I got a text from him. On a Sunday. You know what that tells me? When I remember the type of person he was? That means he didn't sleep that night. But why, oh why was texting me and saying like, oh, hey, I was just checking in and seeing how you've been. It's been like five months. No, the last time you were even somewhat of a, not even a decent friend, but a, a, a physical presence in my life was like fucking October. And that's a whole side story. I'm like, okay, so why the fuck did you message me? You're not trying to be my friend again. So like what? Like, that's kind of what I said. He's like, oh, yeah, I was just checking in, seeing how you're in. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, great. I'm taking my boyfriend to go see my family because it's Father's Day. I would have thought, you know, you would be with your dad. He's like, oh, my dad's too busy for me. I'm like, that checks. You deserve it. Anyway, fuck you. Don't let motherfuckers come back that he was looking for the ego stroke because I used to be obsessed with him because I, again, had a lot of problems going on in my life and I used him as a form of escapism. I thought we were genuinely like close friends for a while and I was high off delusion. That man treated me horribly. 
all of his friends also it's the the worst part is when you meet a fuckboy's friends and they gaslight you too they're all trying to tell you how much he's never liked this before or he totally cares about you in his own fucked up way or he d this and that i'm like no don't even try to meet a fuckboy's friends unless you're trying to fuck them don't because they'll gaslight you they don't know that motherfucker he hates all of them he hates all of them he shit talked them so much he's l quite literally like he is what i would call a sugar baby that doesn't have to put out sugar with his current living situation he's a sugar baby that doesn't put out sugar his friend takes care of him because they're in an unhealthy codependent relationship where he's nothing without his rich bestie they resent each other they will never do anything about it if they live past 40 with their habits that i'm not going in depth into i will genuinely like if they get it together at 40 cool their only options in life is being sugar daddies though they don't have much going for them in their current state maybe they're doing better who fucking knows but heed the warning just because they come back does not mean you let that door open and take them in with open arms. I was so beyond pissed waking up that morning. I had just such a sweet night with my boyfriend. I'm waking up in his arms, check my phone, and I see this gangly motherfucker in my DMs again. Halfway through the year. And so I was pissed off. I'm like, I'm here with this sweet man, and you're DMing me. Ew, you fucking roach. Leave me alone. And you should feel that way about that man too. Leave him alone. And don't let him come back. If you have to, if he's trying to knock on the door, just open that tiny little window and be like, what the fuck do you want? Don't open that door. Your life will get so much better without him. Don't open that door. You do not have to let everybody back in that wants to check in on you because he didn't have an apology he was just curious aka i need my ego strokes because nobody has dedicated themselves so much nobody has been there emotionally and i'm like obviously he didn't say that but like he wanted his ego stroked and i used to be the ego boost i was the surefire thing as someone unfortunately set to my face which they were not wrong but it still hurt a little i was the surefire thing i was always there if he couldn't get laid by someone else i would be there to give him attention and cuddle up with him and talk about video games with him blah 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 never be the surefire thing scarcity is important let them know do not let them think you're just always going to be there do not let them get away with shit. Do not let them come back unless they have an in-depth apology about their behaviors. And even then, put them on thin ice if they do come back. But anything less than an actual genuine apology and offering to like make up and everything, they're not here because they miss you. They're there because they're bored. And he kind of admitted that. I'm like, are you bored or something? That was the first thing I responded. I'm like... Are you okay? Are you bored or something? Something wrong with you? He's like, I, I could say I'm a bit bored. I'm like, yeah, of course you are. Fuck you. Ruining my fucking day. Well, he didn't ruin my day, but it left a sour taste in my mouth that morning. Remember, that motherfucker is bored. You're not the love of his life. He didn't realize what he lost. He's bored. And he's hoping that you still have a place in your heart for him. He was bored. You're the thing he's coming back to because he's bored. You move on. You move out. Like, it's just... Don't let them back into your life. And honestly, it's unfortunate how many takes it took for that to really, like, hit for me. But, you know, some people are too forgiving. If you're too forgiving... I know I'm going to cut my ends right here. Had to be done.
Don't be too forgiving to the wrong people. It's not going to save you. You're not you're not better than anybody else either for doing. Just level up. Improve your life. Don't let them fuck up shit for you. promise you it's so much better to not do it for the plot sometimes because sometimes the plot's not worth it don't do it for the plot you know don't don't let people in this goes for friends too do not let people in that like you felt real like fucked up with like this man left me at a fucking bar, and I can't believe I forgave him for that. I'm like, no, you're actually just genuinely an evil son of a bitch. Anyway, yeah. Don't let the motherfuckers come back into your life. You deserve so much better than that. Like, you know, find peace within yourself. Know that you deserve better than that. And then do something about it. Anyway... This is as far as I've gotten with my hair. Oh yeah, this is fucking straight my hair. Um, I'm gonna wash my hair probably tomorrow after I get all the braids out. See you later. Bye.